Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment from our webinar series, Straight from the Horse's Mouth. Your sustainability information can be complex. How can you present it clearly and in a way that avoids claims of greenwashing? Design and graphics can help your audience read your sustainability report, interpret results and understand complicated industrial processes. This webinar explains how our design team helps clients communicate their sustainability work to engage stakeholders and have an impact. Here's a sneak preview. So our job, as in communications and creative, is to make this big report into a simple, concise and personal language that makes our technical findings easy for our clients to read, understand and act on. Writing a really good executive summary really helps you not only to um, help the team, but also to kind of go through your own thinking process and reassess and test if that if really still holds thinking of your audience. So visuals can help you, right? They can help you tell that story before you read the story. It provides like a snapshot and obviously it can bring content to life. But remember, it's not about dumbing down. We're not here to dumb down the content. We're here to gradually get you into the information. The reality is this is ever changing. Sustainability is constantly changing. So the best thing you can do is be open about that and really talk openly about your transition and how you're moving and continuously improving your own processes. Carolyn Nordyke, our ThinkStep ANZ Head of Creative, joins us for this webinar. She has worked in product design and brand identity. She understands product systems and combines this with her creative talent. Caroline leads our team to produce infographics, nutshells, sustainability and climate disclosure reports, and the visual look of our documents and presentations. Caroline joins Sally Ann Kastner, our Senior Circular Economy and Strategy Specialist. Sally explains how she works with our creative team to explain complex ideas and processes. Caroline and Sally will share examples of our design work, including nutshell reports and our need-to-know guides. With that, Let's get started. So I'm Sally Ann Kasner and I'm with the ThinkStep team and I'm going to be your host for the next 30 minutes. Uh, today we joined by Caroline uh, Nodek from our, uh, who is our head of creative at ThinkStep NZ. It's really amazing to have a, such a big audience today. And some of you might not know ThinkStep NZ. So who are we? We're really passionate about helping organizations to succeed sustainably and we help with st strategic sustainability projects and reports, detailed studies like life cycle assessments, carbon footprinting, but also designing circular economy systems. How do we transition to a more circular society? We do our own creative and design work in-house, and we've been doing this for over 16 years in Australia and New Zealand. So really happy to be with you this morning. I'll, I'll quickly just give a quick uh, intro to Caroline and her team um, who do amazing work and they use design to highlight really what matters. They produce infographics, case study, sustainability reports, um, environmental product declarations as well. And they work with our technical um, experts to help our clients understand and act on our technical reports. My name is Caroline, um, as Sally explained. Um, me and my team um, work together with communication, creative and comms, as we like to call it. And today I'd like you to talk through some of the some of our thinking and let's start with just a little disclaimer we as in our creative comms teams are not an advertising or marketing agency i am not a marketing specialist uh, but our purpose is really to take the valuable work of our colleagues and translate it into content that everyone gets sustainability um yes this can be very complex and challenging and as we know ever changing we also know that in some cases, the report writing and some of the methodology and the, the approach can be rather technical and somewhat confusing. So I'm just going to let you read this for a second. A little narrative that comes out of an environmental product declaration. And this is described as when we describe our system boundary. Pretty technical. Maybe you get it now. So by using infographics, we can translate written content into a visual that maybe speaks a little bit more to the imagination. So what happens a lot of the times we do incredible, really in-depth technical work, and it ends up in a really big report, which is wonderful, right? But kind of wonderful maybe for the 1% who actually understands what's written in the report. It is a lot of times really big, 
lots of data. It's complex. It's got loads of terminology and lots and lots and lots of acronyms. And it can get lost in the, de- in the detail. So our job, as in communications and creative, is to make this big report into a simple, concise, and personal language that makes our technical findings easy for our clients to read, understand, and act on. Especially the act on, right? <laughs> because we want to do something with it. And when we look at language, it's the written language, but we've got all sorts of language. And today we're going to talk a little bit about with the visual component of it. A simplified approach in terms of how you can how you can think about this process. We always start with, okay, so you've got your full report. That's great. But who do you need to reach? What is this audience? Who are these people who need to read it? You also need to understand what is the real purpose? What is the clear core message or messages that you need to get across? And then once you know that, you can start thinking, okay, what is this hierarchy of content? How do we get a visual hierarchy or how can we get it? Deliver the content in a way that you can easily digest it. And then finally, it's really important to keep it clean. So remove any of the visual or contextual noise. It's again but about it's, a, it's about creating a hook. It's about creating that, uh, guiding your audience into the, into the materials. But I, I'll explain a little bit more about that. So let's start at the top. So you can look at the first bit, know your audience, and the clear purpose is really setting the scene, deducting the content, getting to the real essence of what you're trying to communicate. And on the right-hand side, the visual hierarchy and to keep it clean talks a little bit more about how we would do that. Going to the basics, who are you trying to reach? This could be anyone, right? It could be like, okay, I've got my report and really the sole purpose of this work is to convince my board to, to really, you know, uh, create some action and give us the the uh, opportunity and um, you know make us move forward. But it could also be like, no, this is really for the sustainability professionals among us, and I really want to discuss this technical information with them for them to build and carry on building their own sustainability strategy. It could also be that this report ends up at customers, your customers, or customers of customers, and then the language changes yet again. And it could also be that it's really a market of really. Uh, the purpose is for a really good marketing piece. But one thing that binds them all is that they're all human, right? So it actually helps just to think along the lines of like, if I were to explain this at the dinner table, what kind of language would I use? How would I go about it? And the one thing I guess what is really important, never assume, never assume that people know what you're talking about. When I ask you, think about, think of a dog. We'll probably all think of like different dogs, right? Big ones, small ones, little pet dogs, little jumpy dogs, little barky dogs, all of it. But I was actually thinking about my own dog, little Whippet. So it's kind of important to state the obvious and explain. And the same is for sustainability. A lot of times we have different ideas about what sustainability is and what its purpose is or what elements are most important. So spelling it out at the beginning and really setting the scene and perhaps repeating a little bit of the content that your audience might already know is actually quite important. Um, We're all on different levels of what we call the maturity curve in terms of understanding of which level which level you are in sustainability and what's the worst thing you can have when you repeat yourself and people go like yeah I know this it's kind of cool too right so now that we've talked about the audience the next step would be okay what's really the message what's the core message that you're trying to deliver here again reports can go very much into the detail and there might be some really amazing nuggets in there but that might also distract from the core message so how would you get to that And if I were to be blunt, I normally say to my colleagues, shit in, shit out. So if you don't have a badass executive summary, if you don't have something that's really concise and really well written, it's going to be incredibly hard for the creative team to start working on that. Um, So writing a really good executive summary really helps you not only to um, help the team, but also to kind of go through your own thinking process and reassess and test if that really still holds thinking of your audience. The next step would be, okay, I've got my really amazing executive summary. I'm going to pick out one, maybe three core messages that I'd like to visualize. And then after you've got that in place, then you kind of start thinking about, okay, how do I set the scene? What order do I deliver this content? What I'm really trying to say is, right, you'll be a much better designer or place with your own role. 
writing is really the art of going through dense content and clarifying and making it um, easy to understand and going almost to that dinner table in a way of like, would this, would people get this? When I talk about the purpose of visual language or really well presented uh, content, it's all about creating that hook, creating that first step, drawing people into the content and hopefully getting them excited to breathe on and go deeper and deeper and deeper, but maybe even to the point where they go all the way back to the original report. We're all uh, time poor and we tend to be... Um, visually inclined so we, we kind of like pictures right it's it's again um how do you create that hook so visuals can help you right they can help you tell that story before you read the story it provides like a snapshot and obviously it can bring content to life but remember it's not about dumbing down we're not here to dumb down the content we're here to gradually get you into the information so if you were to look at a at a sort of like the basics of a good graphic kind of goes through a couple of steps, the way we see it at least. <laughs> it's again, starting with understanding okay, who do I need to talk to? So to keep those stakeholders in mind. Then you start focusing on what matters before getting into the detail. Simplifying, chunking it down, taking stuff out, creating hierarchy. And I'll show you in the next slide uh, what I mean by that in a way, but it's the way I, I always explain it is you, if you look at a page that's designed and laid out or whether it has written content or anything on that, the stuff, the hierarchy is, is reveals itself when you look through your eyelashes. What are the big things that pop up? What are the big things that stand out? And that's sort of like how you get to your hierarchy. And ultimately, it's also kind of nice if you can connect the dots between the visuals and your audience and present things that are relatable. Um, sometimes bringing narrative, bringing it into a world that people can relate to can really help. And this is what I mean by facial hierarchy. You will likely go through the process of, you will read this first, this next, this third, and this last, and maybe even after the last one, top left, the actual title of this slide. Very simple exercise. Look through eyelashes, you get the same. So let's have a look at, uh, at some graphics, yeah? And let's have a look about when we keep those five things in mind, what works, what, do, what doesn't. So I decided to obviously start with some poor ones. So if you use graphics, overloading it with a lot of detail can be risky. So on the left-hand side, if you look through your eyelashes, do the same exercise, everything stands out. And then we also have a little, little problem here with visual cues. And it depends a little bit on your culture and where you present it, whether you read left to right or what colors mean to you. But in this case, Red, green, and orange juice kind of starts alluding to, is this kind of like a traffic light, good, bad, medium? Probably not right, but it becomes quite confusing quite quickly. It's not kept clean. There's no, <laughs> there's not a lot of white space. So there's not really any place for you to land your, your eye first. Right-hand side, similar thing happening, right? Not legible. It's nice to introduce 3D shapes or go a little bit off script, but it can easily become quite confusing. And there's no hierarchy and there's a lot of, as we call it, visual noise. Basically, where do you start, right? If you want to get a slightly better version of it, this might help you. So on the left-hand side, you kind of, your eyes led to the percentage. Yay, that's my first message. You see somebody with a walking stick or what do you call it? Okay, with it, <laughs> bundle stock. Um, uh, okay, so we're talking about older people. So, you know, there's a good focus. There's more room to breathe. There's nice color balance. The graphic's supporting the message, but it's not quite right. Because the one thing that you, you might not be able to read it, but the one thing that's missing here, a bit of a clue, it's incarcerated elderly. So the context is not fully explained and the copy below the 76% could have been a bit better. The one on the right is quite information rich, but there is a bit of a hierarchy help, um, happening with the colors, bringing the brighter colors a little bit more to the forefront. There's uh, a directional use. You kind of read it from left to right, but also stuff going up, which kind of works in the context of we're talking emissions here, stuff going up, and then it points to the little emissions types. 
And um, the focus here is on scope three. So there's more happening as information bits, but some of the, the clues and the tricks are in place to help you read this graphic a little bit better. This is another example where the repetition of grid starts, you start recognizing little groups. And it's like, oh, I've got the side kickers, the substitutes, and the career freelancers. Oh, these are groups. And again, start comparing information because it lands in similar places. Color use uh, helps here as well for that further segmentation. And there's hierarchy in headers. The animation is fun but it can sometimes be a little bit distracting where your eye just starts to <laughs> immediately be drawn to the moving parts away from any of the information that's being presented. And also the typography could have been a little bit better to again, improve that hierarchy. You know, you're onto a good thing when text starts to fall away. I don't know if anyone in the room understands. I believe this is Korean, but uh, I certainly can't read it. But I can pick up some clues, something with cycling, something with distance, something with climbing, maybe. And this is the English version, slightly different, because in this case, it's not cycling, but running. But you get it right. Like the min taking stuff away um, a lot of times really helps with clarifying the message. So you might be thinking a little bit about, OK, so I've got a message to tell and I've got loads of information but I'm a little bit worried that I might enter this world of greenwashing where um, my audiences um, might, you know, give me some, um, some negative feedback. So you probably know the greenwashing, you know, misleading claims uh, about environmental credentials, and it can be extrapolated a little bit more. Um, regulations are coming into place. European Union have stuff in um, proposed, and also New Zealand and Australia are looking at it closely with different guidance in terms of how business can improve these environmental claims. And to be clear, greenwashing has a, it has become like way and way more sophisticated with all these different kinds of terms in, in order to either distract from uh, certain things that might not be that that great uh, or putting the blame sometimes you know, on consumers, etc. So we are aware that and it's it and, and we get it too, you know, sometimes the numbers, we're all about numbers, we're very much about data, are not that favorable or are maybe a little bit um, disappointing in a way, but the reality is it also informs us to do better and to move forward. These are some examples, um, <laughs> some pretty poor examples. And also the labeling and the knowledge um, in terms of whether certain materials or certain uh, processes or ways of where we think that it could be recycled or it could be composters really depends on the regions. So yeah, it's it's tricky. It's it's not always that straight up on how you can prevent it, but there are a few things that you could you could do, and this also ties back in terms of like what is the the true uh, message? How do you back it up? Um, for think step, we're all about data, so we're very much aligned with the first one. Um, avoiding it can be done by like okay, how do I prevent? Um, any negative people just back up your claims imagery um we highly recommend that if you use any imagery that it's not just because you want to set the scene and put in a beautiful landscape that has potentially nothing to do with your narrative or your context so just be aware of what kind of imagery you use certification can help here but please do your homework whether it's relevant to your industry to your audiences and whether they get it if they don't um take it as an opportunity to to again educate or inform your audiences what this certification means and why it's important to you. Another way is, uh, and this is also where a lot of the legislation and European Union and Australian um, Competition Consumer Commission are looking into is like refrain from buzzwords or words that are really fake and generic. And then finally, yeah, you could be saying, okay, I'm just not going to communicate at all because, you know, I'm just really worried that I misinform. The reality is this is ever-changing. Sustainability is constantly changing. So the best thing you can do is be open about that and really talk openly about your transition and how you're moving and continuously improving your own processes. Let's talk about a few of our examples of our work um, and that will also hopefully help you um, sort of imagine the power of design or the power of communication and design within sustainability. 
we just talked about greenwashing and about um, uh, not using fake terminologies and being really uh, evidence driven. It's, it might be worthwhile looking for the ones who do not know environmental product declarations yet, but to have a look into environmental product declarations because they are really strict in terms of what you can and cannot use in terms of terminology, in terms of images, in terms of... And it's really good guidance almost. If you really want to be sure that you're not greenwashing or misinforming, then uh, try and do an environmental product design and you'll quickly learn where, where the line is. Um, for our customers, we do environmental products uh, declarations as the technical piece of work, but now also as the output and the design piece of work. In that, we would create uh, nicely laid, laid out pages to guide you through the narrative of what an environmental product declaration is, as well as what the purpose is. And in that, we also use infographics uh, or diagrams to explain processes, to explain uh, life cycles, etc. Nutshell reports um, is that really badass executive summary lifted into uh, a more creative and a more visually uh, uh, piece. And it helps uh, clients to get that report down to four pages. An exec summary would normally be a little bit shorter, ideally. But again, we're adding these graphics to elevate the content, to draw attention to and to hopefully support the context and really bring it to life. We also do that sometimes in presentations if clients ask us to do. And then we've got our own work, which is the need to know guides, which again, like um, using that visual repetitive, I guess you can see on the left-hand side, uh, we're using a similar grid of rep repetition things so that people get a point of recognition. And we also do it for our own sustainability reports as well as sustainability reports for our clients. I kind of want to end here is, uh, uh, a quote by Paul Rand. He was an American art director and graphic designer, um, done logos for IBM and UPS and some of the other big American giants. And he stated, design is so simple, and that's why it's so complicated. That was my uh, presentation or my little guidance, little snapshot of some of the work that we do. I think what for me is really important is, and I, I quite like that the little Paul already alluded to that, that of course design needs to be or ideally is aesthetically pleasing unless you have another objective. Um, but it also is really about that collaboration between really well-written content and then lifting that to create uh, those hooks and to gradually get people into the content. And especially when we talk about sustainability, this can be a challenge, right? Because it's changing all the time. But people don't have the right understanding of what sustainability is or could be or should be. So this is the, our, our really our, our driving force is to get um, get that across in a in a real well written way, but also in a really officially pleasing way. Thanks, Caroline. I mean, it's just incredible uh, to to see this come to life. And I've worked with Caroline on on a couple of projects, and it is quite um, when you're working with with a creative that 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 has got um, such an amazing background in terms of um, an understanding for sustainability and the message, um, it it really helps to kind of get get that message across. Um, so Caroline, maybe a quick question. Has there been um, a, a project where you've been given such a vague brief, um, but you've still managed to, because I'm sure I've given you one of those vague briefs before, where uh, you, you basically had to kind of really just come up with um you know yeah how, how did you how did you uh work through that that vague brief without that badass exec summary mm -hmm. working with and coming from an industrial design background i kind of am familiar with some of the processes and things in place when it comes to sustainability so i've got a little bit of a leg up i've also got a leg up because i'm working with a lot of really talented sustainability professionals directly so when i get a fake brief it normally starts like what are the materials that I have at hand and, and coming up with a first deduction myself and then go back to the client or the person who gave provided the brief and say, OK, am I interpreting this correctly or do we need to have a chat about the work itself before I even start? And that's normally it's like if the if the executive summary is not well written, that the, the, the first thing I can do is talk to the one who created the report. 
and basically ask what is the main thing that what's the main takeaway what's the most important thing and never give me the detail I go like I think that's a detail <laughs> can you can you further yeah. explain uh, what it means or go back really at the at the starting with again the two things who do you need to talk to and what's the purpose of this work and then you get a starting point and then you can start creating through a conversation the executive summary um or you can go back and say like please write your executive summary because it's <laughs> <laughs> so a question from Adrian, adriana um many years ago i found a u.s company called explain that created these amazing visuals that assisted companies how to act not just communicating information or data but rather visual communication that directly targeted staff and what company change policy or processes meant. Do you, this, do, you do this kind of work as well? We can. <laughs> yes, we can. Um, I think, um, I, yeah, I, I think it's it's all about like, again, what do you want to communicate and how do you, what's the purpose, right? And mm -hmm. when it comes to communication and visuals, I think boiling it down to what's the the purest thing that you need to communicate is the most important thing at the get from the get go. You can embellish with like other things over the top uh, as you again drag people uh, uh, into the content. We start, of course, we are connected to a sustainability company, mm -hmm. so ideally mm -hmm. it would be hitting any of the three main sustainability, uh, you know, um, areas. But yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely open to any kind of work that is in that space. Yeah. So thank you for everyone's attention and hopefully you got out what you were aiming for and um, you've taken away that um, you need to write a badass executive summary and uh, to be able to, you know, get that message across initially anyway. Thanks very much for your time and uh, see you at the next webinar. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>